Welcome to AccuTherm's webinar presentation, Energy Modeling Thermofuser VAV Diffuser Systems. Uh, we're expecting a few more people to join us. So we're going to give them one more minute to log in, and then we'll get started. Welcome to AccuTherm's webinar presentation, Energy Modeling Thermofuser VAV Diffuser Systems. I am your host, Bob Klein, AccuTherm's Director of Engineering. This is an interactive presentation, but the audio portion is one way. You can hear me, but I cannot hear you. To ask a question, I am encourage that you do please ask questions at any time during the presentation. Use the questions window in your GoToWebinar control panel and type your question there. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us for today's webinar, Energy Modeling, Thermofuser VAV Diffuser Systems. This is an ongoing webinar and a series of webinars we've been presenting. So hopefully you've had a chance to attend one of the others. If not, uh, we are talking about Thermofuser VAV diffusers. They're a ceiling diffuser with a thermostat and a VAV damper built into the diffuser. By having a thermostat in each diffuser, we are able to create very small zones of control within the building and provide individual set points to each of those small zones of control. Also, by having the VAV damper, damper located in the diffuser, it does lead to some better discharge air velocities throughout the VAV operating range, which leads to better air movement within the space and more even comfort within the space. Primarily, we're talking about thermally powered diffusers. Uh, no wires, no pneumatics. Uh, they're powered by thermostat actuators using the temperature of the air to get the power to the diffuser. Uh, electric versions of the diffuser are also available. Uh, you can get some very efficient costs uh, from a system of thermofuser VAV diffusers by creating larger master zones that are subzoned with thermofuser diffusers. Also, the diffusers have proven very reliable over the years. Uh, the thermally powered ones really require no maintenance and come with a 10 year warranty. And you can design a very efficient system around the diffusers, which allows for quite a few lead possibilities. And that's a good lead into our webinar today, which is uh, energy modeling. And part of that is designing a low energy system and then modeling it to, to prove the design. Over the years, many energy models have been run. Uh, here's a selection of a few. The first one there compared VAV boxes to a thermofuser VAV diffuser system looking at those larger VAV zones as compared to the very small zones of control created by the VAV diffusers. Also looking at medium pressure systems typical of a VAV box system, comparing it with an all low pressure system that can be designed around the thermofuser diffusers. That energy model was projected over five different climate zones. And just depending on the climate zone, anywhere from 15 to 47% more energy efficient for the thermofuser diffuser system. Uh, the second model on the screen there, uh, I like to include this one because they not only compared thermofusers to the VAV box system, but they also compared the thermofuser diffusers to an active chilled beam system. Uh, this model was projected over three different climate zones, and as those climates required more and more heating, uh, the thermofuser diffuser system was up to 23% more energy efficient than even that active chilled beam system. The last study on the screen there, this is uh, a more recent study done to the uh, latest ASHRAE standards. Well, I say latest, uh, there's another version out uh, at this point, but the latest in use at the time, and it was compared across all 17 ASHRAE climate zones, and it was a thermofuser system model against the ASHRAE 90.1, which is the energy standard, uh, the baseline. Uh, the baseline is basically a VAV box type system, but it's an, it's an efficient version of that. And just depending on the climate zone, uh, anywhere from 10 to 31% more energy efficient for the thermofuser diffuser system. So just to make sure you don't think it's all theory and no practicality, here's a couple of real world projects. Uh, first one there, a LEED Platinum project, uh, able to get all 10 energy credits under the LEED uh, NC version 2.1 being used at the time of construction, uh, thermofuser diffusers helping to achieve those energy credits. Uh, the second building there, stopwaste.org, uh, it was an impressive building when it went up. Uh, it was one of the first platinum uh, buildings for LEED under the NC version 2.2 of their standard. 
Uh, possibly more impressive, it, it also bettered California's stringent energy code, Title 24, by 45%. Uh, since then, they've been able to go back and recertify the building under lead existing buildings, and it became the first platinum building under the version four, lead version four in the world. So a very energy efficient approach, uh, holding up over time as well. And then the last one on the building, uh, sorry, the last one on the page there, uh, this building, over 800 diffuser, thermofuser diffusers throughout this high rise office building, uh, built prior to LEED gaining any momentum, but then as LEED came into play, they were able to go back and again, under using existing buildings version of the LEED standard, uh, get a platinum rating on this building, also get all 10 energy credits, again, thermofuser diffusers helping to achieve that rating. So how are these buildings doing it? Well, we're going to break it down into six areas today as we look at it. Uh, we'll start with discussing low pressure systems and low turndown ratios. We'll then look into identifying high load spaces in our models, uh, then developing a realistic model, get into the individual temperature control provided by the diffusers, and then lastly look at avoiding reheat. So to get started here, we're going to look at low pressure systems. Um, when you design a, a traditional VAB box system, you're always making a compromise between the minimum flow of the VAB box versus the pressure drop over the box. And a little bit this is all uh, done because uh, a modern VAV box uses differential pressure sensors to calculate or measure flow and then it uses that flow as part of its control algorithm. So there's always got to be a minimum velocity there and that works out into this compromise. What it typically means though is uh, from a pressure point of view, you usually end up with an inlet static on the box of anywhere of 0.4 to 0.5 of an inch. And now you work that back to your fan and you're looking at system statics of anywhere of three quarters to one and a quarter inch water gauge. However, with the thermofuser diffuser approach, if you're looking at an all low pressure system, uh, one, it's not being controlled by velocity sensors. Uh, there is pressure control in the system, but that is done by static pressure, which can be measured much easier, much lower. So now we're looking at inlet static at the sensors of anywhere at 0.05 to 0.25. For the system, we're not looking at a pressure higher than 0.25. So now we've got a, a system static of 0.25 compared to a system static with the box of anywhere that three quarter to 1.25. What does that mean? Well, let's take a look at a, a little example here. Uh, here's a typical VAV box system. Uh, we're using 0.4 inch static at the last box uh, on that run. The ducts design medium pressure using uh, 2,000 feet per minute uh, duct design. By the time we get back to the fan there, we've got an inch and a quarter static pressure. So there's the box. There's our fan. Uh, with the thermofuser diffuser approach now, we're going to maintain 0.05 the minimum at the diffuser furthest from the fan. We're going to do a low pressure duct design, 1,000 feet per minute down that duct. And now by the time we get back to the fan, we've only got a quarter inch of static there. Now the difference between those two works out, and, I've, and I know it's a messy slide, lots of formulas up there, but what it breaks down to is by, by reducing that fan static from an inch and a quarter to just a quarter, taking an inch out of the fan, the energy goes from 730 watts to 487 watts. This is fan energy now, and that's a 33% reduction just in the fan energy. So there's a lot of savings that can be uh, had uh, by designing these low pressure systems just on the fan. Second, we're gonna take a look at the low turndown ratio. So when you've got, uh, as I mentioned, you're designing your, your VAB box system, you've got this compromise between velocity and turndown, and it usually results in a turndown ratio of around 25 to 30% for the box. Now, the, the thermofuser diffusers can average 10% or less on their turndown, so a much lower turndown. And this is useful when you're trying to reduce uh, reheat uh, or the need for heat in your building. And the nice thing in the software is, if there, it, it does take account the ventilation codes and standards. So if there's spaces where you're not allowed to turn down that far because you've got to maintain your minimum, minimum ventilation, the energy modeling uh, works that in and prevents that from happening. So we're not uh, gaming the system here. So I'd like to run now, bring this into the energy model and run a quick example here. So when you're looking at uh, 
low turn down ratio, but also looking at low pressure systems and low turn down. I'm going to combine those two in this example. I uh, happen to be using Energy Pro as my modeling software, but this can be done with any of the, mon any of the modeling software out there today. Uh, Energy Pro makes it a little easier for me just because uh, thermofusers are built into the, so the, the software. So what I'm going to do is take an existing VAV box project, and I'm going to take those VAV boxes, and I'm going to run a replace, a global command, and just replace the boxes with thermofuser diffusers. And then I'm going to go into the fans, and I'm going to simulate here the low pressure system. So I'm going to take the fans, and I'm going to drop them by that 33% or 30% savings that we're getting on the fan energy. In this case, putting it into the model as horsepower, the, the model will calculate the energy. And then I'm going to hit the calculate button there. I get a couple of beautiful reports that I realize we can't read because they're too small. So here's a quick summary. Uh, you can see here just on this quick model, just using these first two points, uh, low pressure systems and low turndown ratios, modeling those into our, our system gets us 36.8% energy savings on the HVAC energy. And for this particular building, that would have equated to an extra three lead credits, uh, just showing how that works. So pretty good savings right off the start just by implementing those two, first two uh, points that you get by working with a thermofuser diffuser system. Again, any questions, please feel free to ask them at any time. Use that questions window in your GoToWebinar control panel and type your questions there. Moving along here, uh, we're getting into more of a modeling approach now, and this is identifying high load spaces. So what are high load spaces? Well, when you're in a, a real building, a real system, there's always spaces that have different loads from the ones nearby. And sometimes you have ones that have consistently higher loads than their neighboring spaces. What that means is in a, if you don't account for these in your model, uh, the energy modeling software makes it pretty easy to run averages across your building. And it can be a quick way to set up a model, but it's not a very accurate way. And that's especially important with these high load spaces because when you do have an, uh, a high load space, it, it causes there to be peak loads in that one room that aren't in the other rooms. So having a system that can deal with that, like a thermofuser diffuser system, is very important. Uh, but also modeling it to show that it's working is very important, making sure that the averaging doesn't dilute uh, those high load spaces and just kind of blur them into an average load across the full space. So in this case, here was our model. Uh, we had four offices kind of grouped together there. However, that one office has been noted as a high load space. For whatever reason, the user there is running multiple PCs, multiple uh, printers, plotters, whatever happens to be higher load in that space. So we're just gonna model that separately into our energy modeling and capture those loads correctly. Uh, this is a good lead into uh, our next point, which is developing a realistic model. So just like high load spaces, there are other uh, load shifts within the building, uh, and you want to try and avoid all that averaging because the building doesn't have one consistent load throughout the building. Uh, the, the energy modeling, they work in things like sun load and all that, but we need to put in there things like our occupancy schedules, our plug receptacle loads, and make sure those make sense for the building. And these also then help when trying to show up a, a realistic model, especially with a thermofuser diffuser system, because of those small zones of control and getting those modeled into it. So for example, here's an office schedule. This is the ASHRAE office schedule. And uh, if we look at nine o'clock in the morning, what they're not, they're not trying to say there's 90% of a person or nine tenths of a person in each office. What they're saying is 90% of the offices are occupied. So instead of using 90 or 0.9 in every office, you can break that down. So in this example, I just took, made, created 10 occupancy schedules just to make my math easy. And you can see there at nine o'clock in the morning, uh, I've got nine out of 10 people in their offices and the 10th office is uh, unoccupied. Uh, what I can do with these 10 different occupancy schedules now is kind of randomly put them around the building, use them throughout the building, and create that occupancy diversity that occurs in a real building and has the load shift around as people come and go. 
Uh, the nice thing, again, with the models is you don't have to do this on every job. You can build a few of these and then put them into your library, store these in the library, and then when it comes time to run a model, pull them out of the library and, and insert them to your model that way. So also plug loads, receptic loads, another one to look at. Uh, a good example to, be, to watch for is things like executive offices. Um, just one person in them, but a lot more square footage typically than your average office. So if you're running that average watts per square foot across, you're you're missing or you know there's a, a receptacle diversity that's being lost in running the averages. But because an executive office still only has one person, one PC, they only maybe might only be 0.45 watts per square foot in that area, whereas a typical office is up at 0.8 watts per square foot. And then coming back to those high load spaces or unusual spaces, uh, getting those modeled correctly as well. So if, say a small server closet, 10 watts per square feet. But getting those different plug receptacle loads into your model, and again, either a little bit of random placement around there or logical placement if you know where some of those spaces are uh, into your building. Again, this can be done in the model, get into your receptacle loads there and plug in those different numbers. Uh, next, we're gonna key in on the individual temperature control provided by the thermofuser diffusers. I mentioned this earlier, each thermofuser diffuser has a VAV damper and thermostat built into the diffuser. And what that means is if you think about a typical VAV box approach, and we talk a lot about VAV boxes in, in this presentation because most of the, for example, the ASHRAE baseline is a VAV box system. So it's a good comparison to looking at what the baseline energy modeling is doing. But the a typical VAV box thermostat in one of several rooms, very good at maintaining the temperature in that one room, but uh, it doesn't maintain people's individual preferences. And also as load shift around, it doesn't take into account those load shifting around. Uh, we show that picture there of people finding the thermostat and making adjustments to it to make themselves comfortable. Uh, with a thermofuser diffuser system, a thermostat, VAV damper in each diffuser, not only does it cater to those individual preferences, but as loads shift around, loads don't get biased to or from the room with the thermostat because there's a thermostat in each room. So now we're not overcooling or overheating any of those individual spaces. So bringing this into a model now means uh, creating what's known as a non-compliant run. What that means is part of the ASHRAE standard says that to do an energy model comparison, the zoning must be the same between the, the baseline and the model building. However, because a thermofuser diffuser system does provide additional zoning, uh, you can run this non-compliant model. So nothing saying you can't run the model with different zoning between the, the model building and the, and, the, and the baseline model. It just becomes what's known as a non-compliant run. Um, means you can't use it for something like lead, but it does mean you can use it to see the results and see what the energy savings are. And those can be presented to building owners and those that are interested in what their real uh, savings they're getting from the building is. So it's a, still a valuable tool uh, within the modeling. And it's done by creating these, actually modeling zones that are, are real zones. Anywhere there's a real zone of control, a, a thermostat, modeling those in your system. Lastly here, we're gonna talk about reheat. And this isn't specific to a thermofuser diffuser system, but can be used on multiple systems. But uh, reheat, by definition, is, is a waste of energy because we're taking energy that we've already cooled and now we're heating it back up again. So if there's any way to avoid that, we wanna try it uh, or minimize its use. Uh, so one good way is just in your designs. If you can work with a multiple air handling unit system, uh, to create your zoning, then you won't need any reheat. A couple examples of that. Um, in this case, I've got a, a little library there on the left, three different air handlers, uh, in this case, rooftop units, uh, separating the perimeters of those building out from the interior and avoiding reheat. And also applicable building on the right, a little multi-story office building, in this case, using multiple air handlers to zone different faces of the building so that we've got uh, whole faces of the building uh, zoned together, that the south needs cooling when the sun comes out and the north needs heating, then that can be provided right from the air handler without a need for reheat. So a very energy efficient approach. Um, not so much a modeling technique, but more of a design technique. 
getting back to the modeling though is the, the model is a great tool to optimize your system for your location. So once you've got the building modeled, you can start working with different parameters like how to work with outside air temperature reset, for example, or how to optimize supply air temperature to meet your specific location. And you can make changes to these parameters and then run your model and see what the results are and, make a, and maybe bump up your supplier temperature a couple degrees and try it again and see what happens. So going into the model here, you can make these changes, how the, the resets are done, what the supplier temperature is, and really optimize the building for your location using the energy model. So that's our tips for working through energy modeling with thermofuser diffusers. Uh, one, modeling those low pressure systems, and that's done by adjusting the horsepower of the fan to accurately uh, show what's being used in a low pressure system. Uh, working with the low turndown ratio of the diffuser, and that gets adjusted in the model there under the turndown. Then getting into how the model is broken down and the modeling itself is designed identifying those high load spaces, making sure those are isolated within the model, getting into more realistic modeling by using multiple occupancy schedules, multiple plug load schedules to create that uh, real life diversity within your space, uh, further breaking down your model for to, to model that individual temperature control that can be provided by the thermofuser diffuser, and lastly avoiding or minimizing the use of reheat, uh, again, as an energy saving means. So if you uh, hop onto our website, uh, everything we talked about today is on the website in a, in a nice downloadable brochure, and that can be found uh, right off the home page if you scroll down to the energy savings and click on the learn more button, it'll take you to that download. Also like to remind everyone we do make a range of products, VAB diffusers is our focus, and we have them in a variety of sizes and shapes. Uh, from square diffusers, linear slots, round diffusers. I mentioned uh, they're also thermally powered, but also electric powered. Electric ones come in uh, very handy when you're tying the, build, the diffuser into the building automation system. So each of those diffusers has back net on board. You can tie that right, back, right into your system. Also a variety of options and accessories for uh, the diffusers. Uh, and then different system components to help the diffuser system operate correctly. Uh, all of this is a topic for our, our more of our designing systems webinar, which is coming up. Uh, is that our next one? It is our next one. Uh, what a good lead in. So uh, next webinar is our system application of Thermofuser VAV diffuser systems. It's coming up next month uh, on the 19th. So feel free to sign up at the website there and join us for that one. Uh, that's a, a good webinar looking at how to put the system together and how the diffusers uh, work within the system and, and how to design the system so that they work within it. And then I'm going to close here by leaving the uh, contact numbers on the screen. So there's no better way to get a feel for how a thermofuser diffuser system might work for you other than to, to give one a try. And uh, while I'd love it if you rush out and just buy a bunch of them, I understand you want to take a look at it first. So We'd be happy to walk you through that, and if you want to give us a call, send us drawings, uh, we'd be happy to, to try to demonstrate how a thermofuser diffuser system might work for you. It looks like we do have a couple questions left, so uh, I'll answer those now before we finish up here. Uh, oh, first question, not really energy or modeling related, but are thermofuser diffusers intended to replace a VAB type system? So uh, thermofuser diffusers are a VAV system. Uh, typically, anywhere you would think to use uh, VAV boxes, you can probably use a VAV diffuser. And examples of that might be, if you think about um, hospital operating rooms, that's not an area where, where VAV is typically used, also not a good application for thermofuser diffusers. But medical office buildings, uh, where there's a lot of small exam rooms and doctor's offices, that's a great application for the thermofuser diffuser, providing those small zones of control throughout. Uh, another question coming in, how does it compare with a passive chilled beam system? Uh, I had that earlier example in the thing for an active chilled beam system. 
I don't know if I've got a model against the passive one. That's something I can look for. And I should mention, by the way, if, if you do have any questions that you'd like me to follow up on, or if you'd like to get a copy of the presentation, also put that request into the questions window in your GoToWebinar uh, panel there, and we can get those to you as well. All right, another question here. How does the system know to shut down the fan when the thermofusers all begin to shut close for temperature being too cold? Uh, good question, uh, much more of an applications question, and we will discuss that in a lot more detail in the next webinar. But briefly, uh, you do need to have pressure control designed into your system. And the simplest way of that would be something like fan speed control, whereby there's a static pressure sensor in the duct downstream amongst the diffusers, and as the diffusers start to close down toward minimum, the pressure will build up a little bit, and that will feed back to the fan and cause the fan to slow down. And of course, it's that slowing down of the fan where we capture our energy savings, um, but that's done by doing static pressure control within the system and uh, cording that with using the pressure to make the, the link between the fan and the diffusers. Another question here, how well does this work for a constant volume system? Uh, again, not energy model related, but happy to answer the question there. Uh, Thermofusers diffusers can work quite well in a constant volume system. Uh, many upgrade retrofits done over the years to that. Um, not so much for energy because constant volume, we're never gonna slow that fan down. Uh, in that case, the pressure control is done using a bypass as opposed to fan speed control. Uh, so the same pressure control gets put in place from the diffuser's point of view. It's just uh, the fan never slows down in this case. So as I mentioned, not a not a real energy saver, but it is a great way to improve vastly improve comfort within your space. Um, you're now getting small zones of VAV control, whereas before it was just one large constant volume. So an excellent upgrade for comfort. Uh, just when you have constant volume, not as much energy savings to be had there. All right, looks like we've got time for just one more question, so I'll take that and then we'll sign off for the day. Oh, uh, so I showed an example of improved energy savings over a chilled beam system. Was it active or passive? Uh, that was a active chilled beam system used in that earlier model. Uh, I think that question came in about the passive system earlier. I don't have an example right now of a passive system. I, I will keep my eyes out and see if I can find one. All right, if there are no further questions, then I'd like to thank everyone for attending. I know your time is valuable, so thank you again for joining us. And this concludes our webinar on energy modeling, thermofuser, VAV diffuser systems. Thank you.